Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. Uh, welcome to another episode of Bitcoin Tech Talk Q&A. We are going to uh, discuss issue number 133 today. Um, this is uh, the newsletter that I sent to everyone uh, everyone that subscribed to my email list um, one uh, every Monday morning at around 9 a.m. And usually I, I, I spend some time uh, discussing it on Mondays uh, and you know do a show based around it basically. Anyway, um, I haven't checked any of the comments or anything so let me just make sure that everything is going okay awesome uh, my monitor is a little bit off so i fixed that all right so let let me share and get started all right let's uh let's screen share the application window um there it is. Uh, if you're if you're not subscribed to the newsletter, um, you can subscribe using the show notes. There is a link to the newsletter. Anyway, this is issue number one thirty three, which I sent out this morning. I can't believe it's already April twenty second. Doesn't it feel like the year's gone by really, really fast? Um, might just be because I'm getting older or something. Anyway, um, uh, let me show a couple things first. My book is available on, on Amazon. Programming Bitcoin. Learn how to uh, learn. Uh, learn how to um, program Bitcoin from scratch. And, uh, and the other one is applying for programming blockchain. Um, the only dates that I have currently are, uh, in New York and those are, that's in New York city, May 16th and 17th. I'm still trying to figure out exactly the venue and everything else. Uh, but this is a great way to get started and I can, uh, you'll, you'll have a very good, solid understanding of what's going on after a couple of days of learning from me anyway let's uh let's get to the actual tech talk stuff um all right so uh some of the bitcoin stories let's start off with improving spv security with proof of work fraud proofs so this is from ruben samson and basically he's um he's proposing that there be some sort of a fraud proof around proof of work. And this is uh, where you have uh, weird situations with some sort of a fork or something like that. You have competing chains. Um, and, uh, and the block header, uh, well, so the block header can serve as the proof of work fraud proof. So, um, you know, there, there's a there's a deep discussion on this uh, in the Bitcoin devs de mailing list. Um, here's what the mailing list uh, archive can look like. Uh, but uh, Z ZMN XJ, I can never really. Yeah. So I mean, there there's okay. Here's here's now like a possible new attack as a result of this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, anyway, uh, it's a it's a great way to sort of learn about what fraud proofs are and things like that. If you don't know what they are, basically it's uh, it's proof that somebody's cheating or something or committing fraud. Um, there, there have been all sorts of, um, um, you know, discussions about what that would look like and uh, doing it at what level and so on. Um, we, we know, for example, that uh, a possible proof that uh, you can prove, for example, that a transaction was included in a block uh, right now, it's not really possible to um, prove that a transaction wasn't in a block um, unless you download the entire block. At that point, you can do it. Um, but yeah, hey, that that's kind of what a pr fraud proof is. Anyway, very interesting uh, discussion. You should take a look at it. Um, here's the next one. Uh, sound money, what it is, why it matters, and why three thought leaders believe Bitcoin is our path back to fiscal sanity. Uh, so this one's a little bit more economics-based, and you know, I'm, I'm quoted a few times in it. But basically, it's uh, it's all about why sound money is so important and why, uh, why hard money is a big part of... Um, part of uh, you know what what we're doing what what's needed in society uh, I encourage you guys to read this article as well a um, uh, new article from Paul Sork um, and well I actually I guess it's not that new but it was new to me but this is a way of looking at the uh, the cost of mining and the the big distinction that he makes that that really stood out to me is um, Taking the miner subsidy, which is currently 12 and a half bitcoins, and the fees that they earn uh, as two separate things and, and thinking about them differently because 
uh, you know, as he says, like one is basically like Visa or MasterCard fees and the other is like the Fed, um, you know, like expanding the money supply. They're very, very different from an economics perspective. Anyway, it's a very long article, uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, you may not agree with him, but he, he definitely uh, provides a lot of data around what's going on. So I encourage you to read that as well. All right. Um, this is a new uh, thing that uh, that uh, Blockstream announced this week. This is a forward contract. It's a new way of doing a Bitcoin derivative, essentially. Um, uh, a forward contract's a lot like a future, but not exactly. It's basically a bilateral agre agreement to sell an asset, like. Um, uh, at a at some date in the future, and uh, and that's a very good way to hedge. Uh, like you you um, and it's uh, they essentially did it using uh, lock time and uh, two of two multi sig. Anyway, um, Boxstream took the Bitcoin side of the trade, and I guess Crypto Garage. They're out of Japan, by the way. They uh, they they took the dollar side of the trade, and they they did it. Um, yeah, so interesting stuff, um, and I, I'm sure there will be some um, some uh, papers that will be coming out a, a, as a result of that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want your trust minimized contract, you can contact Crypto Garage, and so on. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's take a look at the next two stories. Um, these are this is really one big discussion, but I split it up into two. Um, this is Alejandro Ranchel Pedrosa, uh, who wrote a couple of posts to the Lightning Dev mailing list. Um, and this is about the stale factory and channel problem. So essentially, it's possible to have a channel open with somebody and you sign uh, one portion of it and the other person has uh, the double signed one, uh, which is necessary to settle on chain, but you don't. And um, and that that can cause some problems, um, and that's that's what this whole discussion is about. This is this other one is the broken factory attack, and this is a, an attack kind of based on the stale um, uh, stale uh, channel kind of problem. And uh, you know, if you if you have a bunch of um, channels and you you do a particular thing, I don't know if I completely understand the details, um, but it's a it's a it's an interesting thing to think about with respect to um, all of the uh, all of the two-way transactions that you would need and what what you can do to kind of screw someone over. All right, uh, next one is from Breno Brito, a former student of mine. Um, he's he's talking here about stable coins and what what the possible. Uh, you know, like wh why it, you always almost always have to pay the price at some point, right? There's there's no shortcuts, and everyone thinks that they can kind of make money out of thin air or keep it stable um, using algorithms or something like that. But there's always some hole um, that you you kind of have to figure out where it is and then figure out where you're vulnerable uh, ultimately. Uh, but yeah, very very good article. Um, and uh, you know, talking about you know stable coins in general, and uh, and why they can be very problematic unless uh, essentially they're fully backed and centralized. Um, it doesn't make it that different than the U.S. dollar. All right, um, Bitcoin SV's horrible April by the numbers. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you might have heard about their delisting the and so on. Um, so definitely a few things that uh, that caused the price to essentially go from ninety dollars to around fifty five. Um, but uh, what this article focuses on is what does that mean for its security? And essentially, uh, you know, you can now attack the Bitcoin SV chain with a fifty one percent attack for not very much. Uh, by uh, like you need. 47 exahashes per second for to attack the Bitcoin network. You need about 1.5% of that to attack the BSV network. And uh, and and as the price keeps dropping, this will become more and more of a problem because I mean, like and exchanges might be delisting and not due to sort of like political concerns, but more as a way to um, 
uh, more more as a uh, as a way to protect themselves because it's possible that they get a giant BSV deposit and then it gets double spent against them in a like a four hundred block um, uh, you know block reorg or something like that and um, on top of that like maintaining a BSV node is kind of expensive uh, especially with the giant blocks that they test on once in a while I mean it's it's like insane number of transactions in some of them so. Um, you know, th this can be very problematic, and I, I imagine that, you know, th this sort of thing as uh, as volume or as liquidity dries up, um, you know, and, you know, price goes down, like, th this is the sort of thing that I imagine would happen to a coin that's slowly dying. All right, so that's Bitcoin SV. Um, let me uh, like now turn to, well, let me just remind you guys again, uh, programming blockchain, New York City, May 16th and 17th. Those are the two days right after consensus. I am speaking at consensus and magical crypto conference uh, right before that. And uh, and that, that should be fun. And again, programming Bitcoin, learn how to be, uh, program Bitcoin from scratch by O'Reilly. Um, my book is available on Amazon for $40.59, uh, which um, is relatively cheap compared to the $70 retail price. All right, so let's see if there's uh, there are some questions. I don't see anything other than anti Sarek. Um, tell us more about your involvement with the exchange level. Well, um, I'm an advisor, uh, and you know they they um, you know I, I I met the founder Chris. Uh, I don't know, like six months ago or something like that. And we are talking about what he was doing. Um, and I got immediately interested because um, because I, I, I knew like just how much exchanges generally screw over people. Um, and, you know, we were talking about that and um, and he, he asked if I would uh, be interested in being an advisor. I, I did some due diligence and I found out that, you know, that he he's a legit guy and he, he definitely knows his CS, um, and I, I thought it would be a pretty good fit given, you know, my technical background and uh, stuff like that. Uh, mostly right now, I'm, I'm advising them on sort of technical matters, like how to scale up the back end, how to scale up, um, you know, engineering departments and things like that, how to um, maybe like some tips on like how to, how to get the intention of various VCs and so on. Um, all, all of that to say, yeah, I, I, I'm involved as an advisor. I'm not writing code for them or anything, but I mean, I, I told them you're going to need to move to an async pr framework because um, that, that's what this sort of technology requires. Um, and, you know, I, I, I have money on the exchange. I, I'm, I'm going to eat my own dog food before, you know, I, I recommend it to anybody else. Um, but, yeah, it, it's uh, it's been great. I, I'm really excited about the automated market maker and, you know, other strategies that are coming. I've already requested tons of feature requests and telling them, like, okay, if I'm going to do it this way, um, I, I, I want these knobs and uh, this needs to update more frequently and all this other stuff. Um, the liquidity on that exchange uh, for being like two weeks old is incredible. Um, there, there's a lot of Bitcoins on there. Considering that they're two weeks old and are only operational in like eight states right now in the U.S. and pretty much nowhere else, um, that's insane. Like, uh, and uh, that speaks to sort of the innovation that they're they're doing with uh, you know automated market maker, where you can essentially make money by providing liquidity, and that that's a much more honest way to um, you know put money to work than something like. Yeah, I, I forget. I, I forget which which one it was, but they're they're promising like weekly percentage awards or something like that. Um, so yeah, that, those are all things that you know you you should uh, think about. Um, I, I really believe that this is the new model. It's like uh, you know, five bucks a month, and you can trade as much as you want, and that that allows you to do a lot more than uh, than the traditional exchange where they take a percentage every time you trade, and you know like. You can't trade very frequently unless you're a giant whale or something like that. It brings um, a lot of the uh, financial tools available to everybody else, and that's why their name is Level. They're kind of leveling the um, the playing field for exchanges, and their vision is to ultimately level the playing field um, in other financial matters and uh, as well. So anyway, that's uh, that's what uh, that's what I uh, what I'm doing for them, and you know I I've been pretty upfront about it. I'm on the front of their webpage, um, so 
yeah, hope hope that helps. All right, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Uh, will you be at HCPP in Prague this year? Um, that is Hacker Congress. I, I'm i not sure if I will be. I, I, I'm going to try, but I mean, like my travel schedule is just kind of insane. And I, I try to keep it to like one, maybe two uh, conferences a month. Um, and, you know, I, I did one last month. This month, uh, I, I did two last month. I, I, I I had to move houses and stuff, so I, I took this month off. I'm traveling twice next month. I'm traveling once or twice in June. Uh, July is my vacation month. August, I think I have something booked already. September, I have one, possibly two. And I think Hacker Congress is in October. So depending on uh, on what's going on, we'll, we'll see about Hacker Congress. Um, as far as, uh, yeah, uh, thanks Edward. Um, I did have a great Easter. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. We, we, you know, you know, played with the kids and ate a lot of food. That's kind of what, uh, and I in particular ate a lot of seafood and steak. So that was awesome. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Craig is so sheep. Hey, you're funny. I, I, I really hope that was sarcastic. Anyway, uh, hope that uh, hope all of that helps you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's always fun, like sort of interacting with people on on YouTube and so on. Um, and yeah, I, I will be releasing more videos later today. And uh, hope that helps. This song is done.